And moving on, um, I'm going to ask the panelists to come up from ITS. And um, Alistair, come on up. You're going to be the moderator for the group. Thank you very much. You're welcome. dangerous with that microphone there. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for sticking around. My name is Alistair Calder, and uh, I, uh, I work in IT services, as do all of these people here on my right. And uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about what IT services does, and particularly how IT services provides value to BCIT in a number of different ways. Um, and I wanted to kind of do just a little overview of what IT services is. I'm sure that many of you have intersected with IT services at some point in time. If your computer isn't working or if there's some technological thing that's uh, uh, giving trouble, if there's something that you're looking for in a lab, et cetera. There's a lot of stuff that goes on at BCIT. Uh, that is digitally driven and um, our staff uh, in IT services is responsible for a large part of that. So we have about 110 people in IT services. So uh, some people I don't know realize quite how big that is. Uh, we, we have one of the biggest departments at BCIT uh, and we do a whole, whole bunch of things. So I decided to pull just a few um, services that we provide. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these people to introduce themselves into their areas. So we provide things like service desk for you to be able to contact IT services and get things answered. Uh, infrastructure services, which will, uh, connects a bunch of systems that allow you to log in to different places or get access to data. We've also got things like printing services that all the students use and that many of us use when we're printing off information. We support a lot of the telecommunications at BCIT, so the telephones and the interconnectedness of our campus. Uh, we've got desktop services, so whenever you go to a lab, you're going to see lots of uh, computers there that are supported by us and they have to be maintained by us for all the students, etc. Um, we've also got things like applications and database services. So. We're looking at some of the bigger systems that we all use. I'm sure we all know what Banner is, or at least have a decent idea of sort of what it is. That has to be supported. It's a very large uh, system. We've got web services. So everything that you see on the web is supported usually by IT services. So our public website, our internal websites, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And we also have strategic practices where we uh, ensure that the business of BCIT is supported from a technical perspective um, uh, through project management and through business analysis. Um, so we have a bunch of people that represent a lot of those groups here today. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them to introduce themselves and their department uh, and sort of how their department uh, provides uh, value to BCIT. Now we're going to do that sort of as an introduction. And then after we've done that introduction, we've got a few more questions that we're going to ask. So I'll start with Carolyn. And uh, you can introduce yourself, your department. And then um, uh, sort of how you provide, what your department does to provide value at BCIT. OK, so first off, I'd like to say that we're a team and we're one department. So um, I work in the client services team, which um, has three separate areas. So uh, my name is Carolyn Goodall. I'm the team lead for the service desk. And our team um, is the voice behind the phone the service desk. Uh, we're the face at the counter when you come in for help. Um, we answer all your emails. We create accounts for you. Um, our other area is the satellite team. So we focus on supporting all the remotes. We can't forget about them. Um, the core desktop team, it's all part of our client services team. We support you in, at your desk with your laptops and your desktops. And in the labs, we support your, the hardware, the podiums, all the computers for the students, the faculty and the staff. We support all the software that uh, help um, with you in your classrooms. So that's what we do. Thanks, Carolyn. 
Uh, my name is Hobie from Strategic Practices, which is a team within IT services. And before I talk, I just want to acknowledge the team over there from the DRC for the great work they do and the important work they do. So just if you give yourself a thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so Strategic Practices is one of the smallest teams, if not the smallest team within IT services. Uh, we are made up of six individuals from uh, various backgrounds. Uh, and I think our, our, our varied background, our broad background, is probably one of the streng our strengths that we leverage uh, day to day. Many of us come from a technical background, which helps us understand uh, more technical terms without you know, getting freaked out when people talk about servers and switches and so on. But um, many of us also come from a business background. Um, because to answer your question about what value we bring, this might sound odd, but the value we bring is ensuring that what we do delivers value that we can articulate and talk about what, why what we, the job we do is important. And you might think that's quite easy. You know, if that was easy to define, then you don't need people like me. Value is not always that clear to define or even recognize. Why are you all here? Are you here to, to teach? I would say not. Value is what people are willing to pay for. And I, I, sorry to say, but I don't think students are here to gorge themselves on the knowledge that you feed them. They're here to change their own lives, to change their stars, and make their life better, to find a place in the world, and you're helping them do that. And I think if you walk to work every day telling yourself that that's what your role is, that's the value you bring to our young learners here, or, well, youngish learners here, um, you know, it, it, it really redefines the role we play. Um, and I play a small part in making sure that we identify what those aims are in all the projects and initiatives that we undertake here to literally put us on the same page about uh, what our goals are, what we do, and make sure that we're sincere about that. If we're saying we're do undertaking this to make teaching easier or to make the experience better for our students, uh, we, we, we have to sit, get down and agree on what that looks like and how we're going to measure that and find out if we've succeeded. Just because I put a server in doesn't necessarily mean the project succeeded if uh, no one's using it later. This okay. is just an introduction. This is just an introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have to follow up on that? Yeah. <laughs> what he said. I'm kidding. Uh, my name's Eric Artson. I work in the server support group. I'm now not going to give a five minute introduction like <laughs> these two did. Um, I help support most of the servers. Uh, with uh, Microsoft technologies, but we have other groups that do the Linux stuff and such. We provide, uh, if somebody deletes a file or magically disappears, we'll recover it for you. Uh, backup, uh, I also do the um, handle the directory services here, which is all the accounts, uh, file servers, and the group policies here. I don't know if anybody knows what those are, but um, what they are is if all of a sudden, your wallpaper changes. That's me. <laughs> All right, I, I'm, I can manipulate the desktops for everybody, but I don't do it for evil. It's all for good. <laughs> and I, I don't think you do them for individuals either. So don't call him up and say that you want a picture of the lions or anything like that, because he does it for the whole campus. You know. Hello, my name's Tim. I work in the web services team within ITS, and uh, we're responsible for the uh, public facing and the internally facing, uh, or most of the web, web services at, uh, at BCIT. So that's the public web, uh, Loop, uh, MyBCIT. Uh, my we do not look after um, Desire to Learn or, or D2L. That's a separate group. But um, the value add is uh, enabling the BCIT community to interface with our clients, stakeholders, and students uh, online. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Peter Simon. I'm with the uh, BAS group, uh, which stands for Business Application Systems. And uh, there's about 20 of us. Um, we're located in NW1, way out in the corner of the property there. And um, uh, it was really nice having the grass all around us, but it's now all been turned into construction. But we still get the job done. Um, so we're, we're responsible, uh, you know, for the systems that do the record keeping and the accounting and the tracking of numbers and those types of things for BCIT. Our, our primary tool is Banner. I think uh, everybody has an idea of what that is. I think I'll get to talk about it a bit more later. Uh, 
the, uh, the other tools are Cognos, which is report writing. It, uh, you can generate reports and uh, we have a lot of people you know, throughout BCIT who know how to generate Cognos reports. We help with uh, TM1, the budgeting program. Um, and um, there's also identity management where we take uh, your name and your A number out of Banner and load it into Active Directory, which uh, Eric supports. Uh, so we're the interface between those two so that you can log into your computer and into um, the loop and uh, Outlook and all of those types of things. And uh, finally, the, the tool that I support uh, is SharePoint. Uh, the, t you know, the tool is SharePoint, the server is ShareSpace and uh, it's used for document management, application development, your PD registration, apps, all those types of things. So that's, uh, that's what we do. Thank you, Peter. Okay, so what I wanted to do is, is uh, we've got three questions here that I wanted to ask that um, will sort of open up a little bit more about uh, how ITS provides uh, service or how they provide value here to BCIT. And the first one is uh, educational focused. Uh, I wanted to ask, how does the work of your area or your team contribute to advancing educational outcomes? Who wants, who wants to start with that? You guys look all like you're all jumping forward on it. I'll, I'll go ahead. Go for it. So client services team supports education um, through your hardware, the desktops, the laptops, and all the software that we provide in the labs to support you and on, on your, uh, your office computers. Um, and we support you at the service desk. We answer your phone calls, your how-tos. They're not just problems. We do help support you in, with your questions as well. And um, there was one last thing I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> um, and at all the remotes, too, that as well. Anybody else have anything you want to say? We don't have to go down the line. If somebody wants to jump in, you can. Uh, we provide it, uh, especially myself. Uh, I've been given a lot of one-off uh, requests from different schools, uh, transportation, health, um, to provide them with a, uh, a server so they can um, load software on it to provide uh, education for students. That's uh, one of the tasks that, uh, that I do. So, yeah. Uh, in, in BAS, um, well, you know, again, we do the record keeping and the, in, in the accounting, so uh, we make sure that, uh, you know, students can register and actually get here, uh, get, get into their courses and have instructors to teach them. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's the, uh, you know, it's the infrastructure that we provide. Um, uh, specifically, uh, I can give you one example of uh, the fact that I'm working with the instructors at the Anasis Island campus to do, to collaborate using uh, ShareSpace to develop curriculum and they're able to, uh, you know, multi-edit documents, you know, more than one person at one time can be editing a Word document and we keep, uh, uh, we, we keep a version history of documents and uh, we've got a workflow established uh, so that uh, they get peer reviews done. And so all of that contributes to the, to the um, curriculum that is then delivered to the students. Yeah, I just want to add uh, upon my colleagues' comments. I, I feel really fortunate to work with them. They, they truly are the silent professionals. When you can come in and log into your computer one day without any trouble, you would never know that they may have spent all night bringing the systems back up or protecting your data from people who want your data. Um, so I, uh, and nor do they ever seek a lot of recognition for what they do. Um, so, I, you know, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure working with these guys all these years. I'm very impre really impressed with how humble they are and how professional their work has been. Uh, so for me, uh, <laughs> student success, right? Okay, so strategic practices, my team doesn't work directly with students. Uh, time to time we do interview students or host focus groups just for research purposes. Um, but our job is to support you and the school's initiatives that down the, down the road benefit students. And uh, if we do a good job, then hopefully you do a good job. Um, and I think what we, if, what we like to do well, that's especially important, is paint, help you paint a picture of the current state. What are the real opportunities? What are the real issues? What are the students really saying? What are faculty actually saying? Um, it's a little bit more than just looking at data. And I, uh, the, so I think the value you bring is, sorry, that we bring is to help you paint that picture, good or not, so that you can make smart decisions. 
Tim. Um, in some ways, we're similar with, uh, with Hobie. We don't have a lot of direct interface uh, um, with the education side, but we enable different departments to, to do that. Um, we're also um, closely tied with Marcom, so we're responsible for helping get funds and seats. And uh, we market the programs, and we, we help students register online and uh, through, through our web um, interface, which is the primary means of doing business with BCFT. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on a little bit, and we're going to talk about uh, um, myths or misconceptions. Tell us about a common myth or misconception about the work in your team. Anybody want to take that one? Go ahead. Um, a common myth might be that the, the web, working with web is uh, fonts and colors. <laughs> I think we've heard that before. Um, it's actually very uh, deep. Um, there's, uh, we've got people on our team who are uh, back-end programmers. They work a lot with the, uh, the BAS team, with uh, interfacing with Banner. We've got um, people who work deeply with analytics um, to see what the trends are and, and how people are using our website and how people are signing up. Um, we've got uh, the front-end design, the people that make the website look and, and behave the way it does. Um, so it's actually quite complex. It's not mm -hmm. just fonts and colors. Peter. Well, I had to ask around uh, my, with my colleagues as to how to answer this one. And uh, uh, the best response I got was that uh, we're highly specialized, each one of us, and uh, it's interesting that sometimes, you know, we'll be helping somebody on the phone with a Cognos report, and, um, and then they'll ask, well, wh while I've got you on the phone, can you help me with this problem I'm having with Excel? And, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, I was asked to, you know, point out that, you know, we spend all of our days learning Cognos or learning SharePoint, and that uh, it's, it's a misconception that we can know everything that there is about computers because it's just such an enormous area. And that's when we say, call the help desk. <laughs> because they, they literally know everything. Well, that's what I was um, going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but it is interesting to be in a meeting anywhere on campus. And if you're identified as an IT person and anything goes wrong with any of the technology, all the eyes slowly turn toward you in the room. It happens all the time. Go ahead. Well, that's exactly what I was going to say, Peter. I, I had trouble um, with this question as well, so I went around talking to my colleagues. And one of the themes was, we don't do light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that answer. Um, so I thought some a little bit more. And it was basically that um, people call us up and think we know everything about everything. And we don't. If you call us up about like Word, how do you do a mail merge? I have no idea. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those questions do happen a lot, too. No matter what area of uh, IT services you work in, you do get a lot of people querying you about one thing or the other. And uh, being on the phone and uh, answering a question about something and then having somebody ask you a completely different question, like, how do I get my Wi-Fi working? It's like, I, I don't I don't. That call. you can call the services. I even call the services <laughs> for that. <laughs> All right, so there's one more question, and then I'd like to take some questions from the audience if uh, you have anything that you're uh, wondering about. Um, the last question is, if there's one thing you'd want the entire BCIT community to know about your work, what would it be? It looks like Peter wants Tim to answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I haven't uh, really come up with a good answer for that, except that, uh, well, I've been here for 29 years, and uh, I just love it here, and I think... Um, Margo's been here for 35 years in my department and other people for just ages. And we stay here because we, we love the work, we love the people, and uh, it's just an honor to, uh, to serve all of you. So that's what we want you to know about. Anything else that you want the community to know? Go ahead, Eric. Um, yeah, one of the challenges that uh, I have, and I'm sure these guys do too, is that uh, this is a uh, ever-evolving industry that we're in. Um, you have about 18 months and then you have to start learning new stuff again and it can be quite challenging to do. So sometimes we're not quite there yet, but we uh, certainly do try. Uh, if you guys could walk away with one thing from me, I would say, you know what, despite coming from IT, not everything needs an IT solution. I hope you remember that, and I think there's, I know. Well, we don't get paid commission, so I don't think we have to sell them a server for everything, but. 
come speak to me afterwards if you want more information. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Um, uh, I think we're going to give you a chance to ask any questions that you have. We're not going to solve any technical problems today. <laughs> um, but if you have any questions that you wanted to ask about IT services or if you're curious about what we do, we'd love to answer those now. Anybody? We even have a microphone, I think, that I can give you. No, everybody's super satisfied with their IT. Uh, <laughs> Paul, go ahead. Here. Yeah. Thanks. I have a question for Hobie. I just wanted to ask about the scope of strategic practices. Do you guys provide services only within ITS, or what kind of services do you provide to other departments? We're open for business for everybody here. Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> what, what kind of services would you provide to like an academic department? Well, when I, for example, when I said we, not everything is an IT solution, and by the way, it's natural for people to assume we always end in an IT solution because we're embedded within IT services. But for example, like if you said, hey, how do we make sure that when people come in here, everybody signs off, um, signs in? How do we make sure that every last person signs in? Let's come up with a way to, to do that. So in a way, we, we, we bring people together, we figure out what the goals are, what exactly is the problem? And that's one, probably one of the most important first steps. When the light goes off and you say it's an electrical issue, but you say it's a management issue, we're, we're not gonna get anywhere. So I think that's, those are one of the services that we, we, we do, is to come up with solutions, not always necessarily technical solutions. So it's basically a review of the needs, you take a look at what the requirements are, and you're trying to find, get, find the solution that the people are, are uh, in search of. Hopefully, the best we can. Oh, good. Terry. It's always, <laughs> always a management issue. I guess this is a question for Peter. We've heard lots and lots about Banner 9 upgrade. What's, uh, I guess that's in your area? You had to know that was coming, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can you fill yes, us in it on is. that? Yes, it is. Uh, it's, uh, it's an enormous project. Um, lots of resources are being thrown at it. Um, we've hired uh, external uh, project manager, a bunch of new staff, I'm just learning their names that you know, sit next to me. Uh, so um, uh, I'm not part of the project. I've never, I, I've never even logged into Banner. But you know, I can, I can hear there's lots of activity and so where there's smoke, there's fire, right? So uh, I, I, I know that uh, progress is being made. Uh, there's meetings going on, uh, you know, just outside of my office every day. Well, not every other day, practically. Um, but I can't give you any specifics uh, other than that things are happening. It'll get there eventually. That is what we're hoping. Well, it, it better if we're going to continue to be paid. <laughs> <laughs> I think this question is probably for Hobie. I'm wondering about accessibility. Uh, because I could give you an example, like the phone that sits on my desk has an answering machine, but, um, and I can sometimes see that there have been messages left on it, but I cannot access it. And so I'm just wondering if um, there's any uh, thing that you're addressing when it comes to accessibility and web-based accessibility. You know what? Not, not currently. That's currently not one of my projects, but it's a great opportunity. Um, I mean, in that case, you are my customer, right? And I'm, I'm here to watch out for your interests, to document and understand your interests and your needs as best as possible, and to communicate that before, so that we can find the best solution possible. So currently, no, but you never know. It's interesting that the, that question made me think about some of the work we're doing right now on Team Web. Uh, we're renovating uh, the website and we're going to be producing a, a much different experience in the uh, coming year or two. And uh, one of the big um, uh, directives that we have is accessibility uh, and ensuring that the website is uh, available to the largest uh, number of people possible with whatever the techniques are currently today. And we're really working hard toward making that happen. So that's a really good question. And it is always a good question because we sometimes have difficulty <laughs> Um, putting ourselves in the mind space of, of recognizing that, especially when we don't have uh, enough rec representation of that on our team. So thank you for asking that. Uh, are there more questions? I think we're getting close to done. 
Okay, uh, I just had one more thing before we go. Um, on Wednesday, May 2nd, uh, uh, which is in a week from 1.30 to 3.30, over in SE12, which is uh, on the other side of Tim Hortons, if you don't know where that is, because uh, everybody knows where Tim Hortons is. Um, we're going to be having an open house and uh, I think it would be great if you came by. So uh, it's one thing to hear us talk about it, but it's another thing to actually come and see it. Uh, so we're gonna have some exhibits where you're gonna be able to see kind of the things uh, that happen in our department. You actually be able to physically see people doing stuff. You'll be able to interact and ask questions. Uh, we've got some interesting displays that you'll be able to see. Uh, some of them are interactive, so uh, I would really love it if you came down. There's also going to be food. I think that was important to say. Um, <laughs> and uh, so Wednesday, May 2nd, 1.30 to 3.30. And I want you to give a round of applause for everybody who came up and sat here today. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's really nice yeah. to see your faces and hear how you support everything at BCIT. Good work.